Recently I had a go at making a ladle and I carved it out of a lump of firewood like this one and it was quite successful. Now I want to try and forge one from a piece of steel. The plan then is to make something or a couple of things similar to this spatula. This I made quite a while ago and it's from one piece of 16 square bar um, or 5 eighths in old money. And it's actually this stuff here. Meaning to make some kind of like ladle serving spoon type thing since I made this and uh, haven't got around to it so this is a chance to do that. One of the things that's put me off was not having a swage block. I have a swage block now and I can use one of these holes here to form the dish of the spoon or ladle or whatever it's going to turn out as. So the challenge with this was to spread out the metal this way um, and I just about managed to get enough in there to make a convincing spatula. If I can do the same again um, but with a slightly more rounded shape that will make a spoon and then I've got an idea to do something similar to this but with slots in it and then bent at a 90 degree angle and I reckon that could be a potato masher. The, um, the big engineering hammer, the giant version of this one. But embarrassingly, I've mislaid it. I haven't lost it. I know where it is. It's, uh, it's out there somewhere. Before I acquired the swage block, I was going to make um, a former for this sort of stuff by flaring out the ends of one of these pipes. Well, this is a bit of scaff tube, but something like this, or, or a, a nice thick walled bit of pipe would do, or anything like that, and just cut it off reasonably square and then hammer the edges until it starts to like, make a sort of trumpet shape, I suppose, and then just weld on a piece of flat bar onto the bottom and stick it in a vise, and you've got a former. This though is better. <laughs> There's no point getting it too hot for this operation because I'm trying to bend the metal and not forge it anymore. It's already at the right thickness. I just need to deform it into the shape that I want.
the next stage then is to start thinning out the neck and forming the handle to match this style. But first I'm going to bring this one up to the same stage. So that means cutting the slots in there. I'm using a file to clean up the somewhat raggedy edges from where I punched it through. Uh, these are my chainsaw sharpening files, which come in two sizes, and they're quite handy for this. The slots are so narrow that even my smallest second cut files don't really fit in there properly. But that is about right all the way up. So I've been busy filing away and um, there's a couple of issues. I've made these slots even out a lot more, but in doing so, I actually had to cut that bit and move this one out. Um, and then I've completely run out of material on the edges here, so it looks utterly stupid. <sighs> I'm tempted just to bin it and, um, and start again. The issue I think, well there are a couple of issues, one of my punching through such thin material I think was a mistake, I should have used a uh, cutting disc on a grinder. If I'd used one of these really thin discs and cut the slot with that, I think that would have been a better plan. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's where the issue stemmed from I think. And then in trying to even up the slots and make these gaps look even and the, and the prongs inside look even, um, yeah, just run out of material. Hmm. Right, having heated it up and flattened it out again, I'm just really unhappy with all this. It just looks such a mess. So yeah, I'm not going to bother welding it. I'm just going to mow this off and start again. That's just horrible, horrible. Live and learn then. I suppose that's what it's all about. I don't know why I'm so keen on doing it out of one piece of steel, it's, it's hard work. <laughs> Looking at it, I think what I want to do, I need to be more careful in my layout because I was a bit slapdash before I think and there's no room for error with something this small. I've decided what size I want the strips to be, which is roughly the same as, as this. And then I'm hacking out the space in between and then I'll 
get in there and stretch these a little bit. And we should end up with something much more consistent and tidier looking. Using the jigsaw kind of like a power file, just gently working up into the top bits. So finally I'm happy with this end of it, and now it's simply a case of making the handles something like the one on the spatula. Very nearly there then I think. There's a few bits I'm not happy with. Um, this bit here I'd like more of a taper. I want this bit to be the thickest point and then for it to taper more in this direction. Currently it's only really tapering there right at the end and I want to put a bit more curve in the handle. It's not really sure where it's going at the moment. This one's closer. This has a a better taper there but with this one it's slightly wonky if you look down it that way it's slightly wonky here so this area needs sorting out
there we go that's pretty much it then um, I'm gonna coat them and go with beeswax this time last time I baked on olive oil and then burnished it off again with this just as an experiment I don't think it really matters all that much what it is as long as it's some kind of oil or, or wax well <laughs> food food grade oil or wax let's say so this is beeswax and turps that's all it is I'm quite happy to eat that in an hour or two it'll start to dry and I'll come back with a, a rag and just buff off any um, excess that's there and I find with that wire brush and the angle grinder you get a nice burnished look to it and all the texture of the forgings shows up really nicely and it's that texture that you really lose when you paint forging which is it's always a shame to have to paint something that's come out of the forge Although in the case of a gate or something, it's <laughs> it's uh, necessary. While I'm here, I might as well do this spatula. So just before I cover this spatula in wax, I just want to show you this has been it's months and months since I made this, and it's been in daily use, and it, it's only mild still, but hasn't gone rusty, as you can see. And that was treated once with olive oil um, when I made it. Yeah, and that's, that's been it. That's the only coating that's been on it. Um, when, when I use it, I tend to wash it up. It's one of the few things I wash it up and then I hang it up to dry rather than stick it in the rack with all the other stuff. Other than that, it's not been... It doesn't get a special treatment particularly. But it just goes to show in the right environment and with a little bit of treatment to it. Mild steel doesn't have to go bright orange and rusty. All these black splodges that you see, that's uh, black oxide, or iron oxide one, I think it is. I'm just gonna, I'll let that wax dry off, I'll give it a buff and we'll have a, a closer look. I'm quite happy with the way they turned out. Um, I'm going to have mashed potatoes tonight, see if this works. If I remember it, I'll film it and put a clip in right about now. First mashing attempt. Oh, hell, straight through. All three of these then were made from this stuff, 16 square or 58 square, whichever you'd rather. I've not seen anywhere people making um, ladles and <laughs> from one piece of steel and there's a good reason it's, it's hard work but it's it's just about doable and quite good fun actually very good to use the the new swage block that worked a treat I'm calling that a win I'm really happy with the way they turned out and I think they're going to be really functional as well I think I've probably made enough kitchen utensils for the time being and it's time to get back on with this thing and the rest of project awesome so stay tuned for some updates on that coming shortly. But for now, as ever, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.